Welcome everyone to this hashtag WrestleMania 31 Q&A part one. There will be two parts to this as there usually is now that I've gone to just doing the Q&As once a week. Now with the being WrestleMania 31 q and I'm assuming some of the questions will have absolutely nothing to do with WrestleMania, but fuck it, it is what it is. Pretty sure. Even though I specifically said it was a WrestleMania 31 q and I'm sure there'll be some non-WrestleMania, non-wrestling questions, and those, I guess, will get answered, too, if I feel like it. So let's get started. Uh, Kyle Turner, do you think Triple H is going to put himself in Sting in the main event, especially with Reigns getting bad, mediocre responses? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. There's a part of me that wonders if it shouldn't main event this show. There's a part of me that wonders if this would be a better option to close this show. Part of me wonders if this will be the match that gets stuck in the middle of the card that for years we'll be talking about how, in hindsight, it should have main evented and closed this show. Especially when you're not sure what you're going to get with Lesnar and Reigns, especially if you're designing it for either Reigns to win, or especially if you're designing it for Lesnar to retain. If somehow you've come to terms with Brock Lesnar and you're going to keep him and you might keep the title around him and you're not going to have a Seth Rollins cash-in, then I would, I would strongly suggest that they not have that match close out this show. I'll roll the dice with Sting versus Triple H. I almost said Sting versus Taker. I would definitely roll the dice with that one. Uh, Triple H versus Sting. I'd feel more comfortable with that match main eventing and closing this show than any other match on this card. I really would. So if the WWE decided to main event this match on this show... I'm most certainly not going to object to it because as I've gone on record and said before, there's just that funny feeling I have that this is going to be the match that people care about, that this is going to be the match that people will remember. I could be ass fucking wrong. And if I'm ass fucking wrong, I'll tell you in the WrestleMania 31 review, that's for sure. But at the end of the day, if you had a match to pick to close out your show, would you rather roll the dice and gamble on Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar? Or Sting versus Triple H. I know where I'm going. Juan or Jean Carlos Vasquez Marcano. So nice, you have to have four names, I guess. What do you think is the main reason that why WrestleMania 31 is still not sold out yet? Um, just the card isn't grabbing people. It's not jumping at people. That's part of it. I'm sure, that's not the only reason. I mean, it's just. Not a strong show. The buildup to it has not been strong. And you're asking people to spend huge amounts of money for a show that isn't really captivating them, that isn't really grabbing them. There isn't that one thing that really sucks you in for this year's WrestleMania as where last year you had Daniel Bryan's quest for the title sucked you in. There's nothing like that this year. And it speaks overall to the general lack of drawing power of the performers within WWE that your biggest show of the year that used to sell out just like that still hasn't sold out and we're a week away from the show. Shay Delane, could Sting vs. Taker save Mania for being a completely miserable show? And if they ever do face off, should it close the show? Um, <clears throat> if it happened next year, you could make an argument, although it depends on what Rock or Triple H would be doing. I mean, if you were doing, let's say, Triple H versus The Rock at WrestleMania, I might gamble with that one closing out the show. If you're not, then yes, I'm still going to roll the dice with Sting versus Taker. I'm going to go with the proven commodities, and I'm going to go with the guys that have been there, the guys that have that experience, especially a guy like Taker. I'll trust in him before I would just about anybody else. Brandon Harden, if R-Truth wins next Sunday, do you think you will have a good run with the Intercontinental title? No, not really. Mm -mm. But I still think he should. He's the only one I care about in this whole IC title feud and the whole setup to it, so we'll probably bring back Sheamus and have him win. Jose Gonzalez, am I doing myself a disservice if I choose not to watch WrestleMania this year? The card looks weak in my opinion. I really don't know if you would be doing yourself a disservice. I just don't see where you just have to watch this year's show. I really, really don't. And as a result, it probably is going to be skippable or forgettable where you could just sit there and tune into mine and a few other people's reviews for different perspectives and pretty much get the 
whole WrestleMania experience without having to actually watch it, frankly. Uh, Steven Jacobson, could the bad crowd reaction in Reigns versus Lesnar be as bad as Goldberg versus Lesnar? Oh, God, no. Because the difference would be, one, you're not in Madison Square Garden. Number two, you don't have it where Lesnar's been having the rocket ship up his ass, and then all of a sudden he's leaving out of nowhere, and Goldberg's contract is up where the two guys clearly don't give a fuck. Big difference. I mean, Goldberg versus Lesnar heading into it had so many components that should have made this so fucking star-spangled awesome in terms of a WrestleMania match. Uh, entirely different. Reigns versus Lesnar could have a bad crowd reaction, but at the end of the day, that crowd might gravitate a little more towards Lesnar than they would have back 11 years ago. Um, Alia Sid Johnson, which other WrestleManias are forgettable compared to WrestleMania 31? Uh, in terms of forgettable shows, you've got WrestleMania 9, obviously, WrestleMania 11, uh, WrestleMania 16, you know, oh, excuse me, WrestleMania 2000, WrestleMania 27. I mean, there are a few others that are somewhat forgettable, but those are the ones that usually stand out as being among the most forgettable. Let's see here. And do you think the WWE will likely have Daniel Bryan win the IC title ladder match at WrestleMania 31 just to pay tribute to Hall of Famer Conor the Crusher? There's a chance of that. There's a possibility of that. But there's also a sick, twisted part of Vince that makes me think that Sheamus would come back in this match and cost Daniel Bryan the match and win the title himself just to fuck with everybody. Uh, Nick Anderson. Oh, here's an example of a non-WrestleMania question, even though I specifically said the theme was hashtag WrestleMania 31. Do you think there's any chance at all that the Bucks don't take a quarterback with the first overall pick? No, I really don't. It's either Winston or Mariota, and most likely Winston, and it has to be. They can't sit there. There's no defensive prospect in this draft that is so head and shoulders above the two quarterbacks that you can risk not taking the quarterback. Just not. I frankly think Leonard Williams is just a teensy-weensy bit overrated by the NFL draft media. I think he's more of a top 10 or 15 talent than he is a top 5 talent. Um, no, they've got to go quarterback. They've got to find their guy, and that's where they need to go with. Nick Perkins, do you think that they'll at any point turn Roman Reigns heel at the event because of the fan backlash over the last couple of months? Uh, no, unless that's where they wanted to go because Lesnar was leaving town and they had Heyman aligned with him, but I think the dynamics of that would be pretty shitty, too. Unless you're going to sit there and say, well, Heyman knew what the present was, but he understood what the future was. Ah, oh, fuck that shit. That'd be stupid. Kuazad, shouldn't the Daniel Bryan fans be upset at Bray Wyatt more than Roman Reigns since he was the one who prevented Bryan from main eventing WrestleMania? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um... How do you figure? How does that make sense? Roman Reigns beat him at fast lane. I mean, I get what you're saying in terms of the whole, you know, Bray Wyatt eliminated him at the Royal Rumble, uh, but, but Danny Bryan still had another chance, and Bray Wyatt doesn't represent to a lot of hardcore fans what Roman Reigns represents to a lot of hardcore fans, so big difference. Now, what people should be pissed off about when it comes to Daniel Bryan is the fact that he was thrown in as an afterthought in this IC title ladder match. This whole notion that, hey, they put the U.S. title on Cena, the IC title on Daniel Bryan, those belts are going to mean more. No, the fuck it isn't because they're not even bothering to do anything with Daniel Bryan in this fucking feud. So all of a sudden you put the title on him and things are going to be magically so much more star-spangled awesome. Get the fuck out of here. Seriously. Lance Clearman, do you really think that this WrestleMania will be terrible? Or could it be a decent enough show to watch? Oh, no, I strongly believe that it's going to be a terrible show. It'll have a couple of matches that won't totally suck, but it won't feel like a WrestleMania, and it'll be largely forgettable. Josh Giles. Will Lesnar Reigns end up being Lesnar Goldberg Part 2? I suppose there's always that chance, but as I explained a little earlier in the Q&A, I don't quite think that would be the case. I am Brandon Burstian. Uh, what are your thoughts on the two-hour season finale of Empire? Oh, baby! Fucking love that show. It's a guilty pleasure for me, damn it. Um, it, it went somewhat how I thought it would. I mean, I was surprised by some of the things that they had happen, like, uh, you know, Andre's wife ending up killing Uncle Vernon. That shocked the fuck out of me. 
Um, you know, one thing about Empire, I will say, is that the writing at times is very disconjointed and very, very spotty and all over the fucking place. What really makes that show tick for me and what really makes that show work for me are the characters, in particular Lucius Lion and Cookie. They're the ones that fucking rule. Um, it's a character-driven show because the storytelling is somewhat lacking. The writing lacks major types of continuity. And this is a good example for the WWE. Your writing can be suspect, which Empire's writing is suspect. There are plot holes and logic holes all over the place. And there are things that just don't make any sense, just like with WWE. But at least Empire as a show has done enough to create and establish characters with unique identities and unique personalities that stand out that you want to relate to or be against, whereas the WWE doesn't. If you focus on developing those characters and making them unique and giving us reasons to relate to them or be against them, it can mask a lot of deficiencies. And Empire is a perfect example of that because it's not a well-written show. It is not. Anybody that tells you Empire is a well-written show is a tool. It's all about characters and shock value. And frankly, that's something the WWE used to be all about. And that's when it used to be really, really good. Uh, fuck, Mary kill. Cookie, Jada, Fire, or Molina. Oh, this is easy. This is easy. You gotta fuck Jada. Make her go squirt, squirt all over the place. You gotta marry Cookie Lion. That's right, I'll stick it to Lucius. That's right. Uh, I'll take those cookies. Take these cookies! And then I have no use for Molina whatsoever. Uh, let's see here. All right. VDJ Omega MVP. Okay, Seth has to cash in his Money in the Bank contract, right? Will he be the new WWE champion by the end of WrestleMania 31? That's what I've talked about is the only real main event finish you could have for Reigns versus Lesnar at WrestleMania. I think based off of the way they pushed Seth Rollins, the way they featured Seth Rollins, the way they frankly have forced Seth Rollins, uh, that, that's the only viable option and alternative that they have. If you're asking me, especially with the fact that he could lose to Orton at Mania, maybe him losing to Orton would be the way to sit there and begin the babyface turn for Seth Rollins, which will need to happen at some point in time. Lamont Williams, okay, is The Undertaker going to win at WrestleMania 31, and are the fans going to boo the main event and cheer for the Triple H versus Sting match? Um, I think Taker wins at 31, I think. I'm not that confident in that, but nobody really wins for that match. Um, there's a chance that the main event could have an ugly reaction, but like I said, I don't think it's going to get to less near Goldberg territory at 20. And yes, I think Sting versus Triple H will be that shining beacon. I really think that's the one that will tear the house down. That's the one that will seal the show. Because here's what Triple H and Sting has going for it in its favor. It is that match where the crowd's not going to be split. People might respect Triple H. There might even be people that like Triple H. But this is Sting. This is the icon Sting. And this is the icon Sting's first ever WWE match. His first ever WrestleMania. The crowd is unanimously going to be behind Sting and unanimously against Triple H, especially if Triple H does what Triple H can do to ensure that happens. It's going to be the most organic feeling match of the entire WrestleMania show, and that's why I think for many reasons it's going to be the match that ends up stealing the show. Um, Mitch Sutherland being a jackass. What would your reaction be when the inevitable happens and Triple H squashes and buries Sting? I don't think that's inevitable at all. Like I said, I have concerns sometimes about Triple H and the decision-making behind Triple H at WrestleMania, but he is a guy, I believe, with a career losing record at WrestleMania. It's just at times, maybe he should have won when he lost, and at times, he should have lost when he won. Uh, but I think Triple H is smart enough to understand that this is about him getting that spot, not about him going over. That's not the right call. That's not the best thing for business. And if anybody thinks that Triple H going over Sting is the right call, well, I've got news for you. It's not, my opinion. So anyways, thanks for your questions for part one of this WrestleMania 31 Q&A. Part two will be coming up soon, so stay tuned.